Hey everyone, welcome to another part of my in-depth review of the new Minotaur range. As always, my name is Jay, and today I will be discussing um, a part of the range that has, actually hasn't come out yet. I was sent this by Ken Badger himself, basically, and uh, it was an honor receiving them and to test them out. And so today I will be trying out the, uh, the still-in-progress um, primer range from the Minotaur uh, paint range by Badger. I just got these in. Uh, a little a couple days ago and I'm wanting to try them out so I definitely wanted to give them a go and there's uh, three primers there's the black a gray and white so first of all I just want to discuss uh, the colors of the th of the three because and then I'll test how they uh, how easily they go on their consistency and how easily you can paint over them and uh, it's still works out. So first of all, let me discuss the colors. Um, they come up with three colors, as I said, black, gray, and white. And that's great. Uh, those are three colors that I always use to prime either black, gray, or white, other than the color primer if I'm specifically painting a specific color scheme. Um, but I think it's great that they came up with all three. A lot of companies start with just black and white and then eventually come up with a gray, but gray is nice. And speaking of the gray, obviously white's a white and the black is a black. But uh, the gray I actually really like. It's a really light gray. Um, it's not as dark as the Vallejo Gray, and I do like this uh, particular shade because it'll, uh, I think it'll be a great color to use as opposed to the white. You can just use the gray. It provides a little bit more shadow and some depth in there, but uh, it's not a very dark gray. I like that. I actually really like that a lot. And uh, for this part of my in-depth review, I'm going to be trying them out on some War Machine models and just seeing how they stack up. So let's check it out. And so to test out these new primers, I decided to use these Stormblade models that I had lying around my workshop. As you can see, they're metal models, which are great to put the primers to the test to see if they scratch off easily and uh, see if they protect the models when putting the paint on. So for each paint, I just took it straight from the pot and put it in to my airbrush and tried to use it then. Now, it should be mentioned that for the gray primer, which I am using now, I tried using it the first time. It came out a little thick, so I just had a teensy bit of airbrush thinner, and it gave it a great consistency, and it came out very smoothly and covered the model quite well. So here's me applying the gray primer, which is a little hard to see because it's a gray primer on a metal model. But as you can see from here, went on nice. It's a very light gray, and as I mentioned earlier, I like that. Uh, it'll... I think it'll be a great color to use. I think I'll be using it a lot more from now on. And as it came out very easily out of my airbrush, after just giving a little thinner into it, and covered the model nicely. And then I repeated this process with the black. Now the black is actually the, probably the thinnest of the three primers, so I didn't have a problem with it at all. In fact, it came out quite easily um, and covered the model quite nicely. It's a little bit of a shiny black when it dries, but uh, that's not bad at all. As you can see, covered the model quite nicely. And then I tried the white primer on the final model. And once again, came out very nicely. I didn't need to thin it down whatsoever. Um, it was just nice and gave great coverage over the model. And remember to use gloves. I really should be using gloves when applying these primers. I'm going to get gloves soon, I promise. And here's what they look like after the application of primer. As you can see, they all went well and they all dried. Uh, there's a bit of a shine to the black one, but not very noticeable. And uh, yeah, they shrunk great onto the miniature, didn't obscure any details of these Stormblade models, and they look great. But that's just the first part of the test. Now I want to see how easily colors can go over them, and then I tried to just, with my nail a little bit later, just see if I can scratch off the paint. So, for each one, I applied a uh, Signar base coat, by just covering all of it, and then at a 45 degree angle, I applied Signar highlight, and then on top of them, from just above, I applied a one-to-one -one mix of Signar Highlight and the Snow White um, Minotaur paint. I'm just applying the top part. 
and I'll show you what they look like afterwards. And as I said, I just tried to see how easily they scratch. And actually, all three withstood very, uh, very well. They didn't scratch very easily at all. And as you can see here, the paint went over them very easily. Actually, stayed very true. You can barely tell the difference between the black, the gray, and the white. Uh, the gray and the white one are slightly lighter, but uh, it's it's very very hard to notice the difference between them. So they all turned out very nicely, and uh, they provided a great surface for the paint. So. As you can see, they went on very smoothly. Uh, Consistency-wise, I might have made the gray a little bit thinner. It was a little thick, so after adding a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit of airbrush thinner, it came out really nicely. Uh, as far as the white and black, their consistency was great for airbrushing. They came out smoothly, instantly went on the model, gave great coverage, great protection instantly, uh, no complaints at all there. And uh, it was pretty easy to paint over them, as you can see. I painted over them with the same colors for all three, and in the end, you could actually not really tell. Uh, other than the black was slightly darker than the other two, there was very minimal difference between the gray and the white, primarily because I was using such dark colors to paint over them. But I was wondering if the blues would come out a little bit truer on the white and gray, but in the end, it was, it was pretty uh, negatable. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed using these primers. I'm going to use them a lot more. Definitely, they are great. No uh, complaints really. I had maybe just the, the gray primer a little bit thinner, but uh, no complaints. With it. being an airbrush user, these are great. I'd highly recommend them when they come out. And uh, I'll be definitely sending my the results of this in-depth review. Maybe if you're out there watching Badger, you'll see this, but uh, I love them. And I highly recommend them to you people out there. The primer range, from the Minotaur paints yet to be released, but when it does, go check them out. So uh, yeah, that concludes my in-depth review of the Minotaur paints. That's it. So I've colored. So just to cover everything, um, paint range, awesome. Consistency is great. A couple of them were slightly off, but besides that, color-wise, pretty good. Um, there was the ghost tints that were hilarious and awesome and fun to use. I only had a problem with one of the specific paints, which has since been fixed, supposedly. Uh, varnishes, the varnishes were a little bit off, I found. The gloss was a good gloss, the satin was actually a gloss, and the matte was a satin. But besides that, you know, no, um, that was pretty much the only pro major problems I had with the paint range altogether. But, uh, and then the primers, the primers are awesome, so definitely check out the Minotaur line, go to www.minotaur.com for more information on this paint range. It's awesome. I highly recommend it if you're an airbrush user like me. And uh, yeah, please like the video, comment in the comment section down below, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.